10 beginner mistakes to avoid when editing photos. Hello my friends and let's get started. So the first thing to talk about is that it makes a lot of sense to take a photo a bit darker than you would actually want it to be. And the reason for that is to avoid spots in the picture that are complete white. For example, here you can see because there is so much light here, this area is completely white. There is no more of these nice details that you can see otherwise in the darker areas like over here. So if the picture would have been taken a little bit darker, for example, a third of an exposure darker than you would normally use it or normally uh, have it on your presentation, then you could find some information in here and use that if you want to make it brighter in your software. Okay, so the second point is about the size of the picture and people cropping pictures. Cropping means you have the crop tool and you just want to have a detail. So I say, I just want to take this detail over here. And of course, you can imagine that this size will result in a very small picture that is not fit probably for a big print or for a big picture that you could use on a website, depending of course on the resolution of the picture they're using. And to see what the resolution is and how much room to play with you have, go up here to document and there to resize document. And here it tells you the pixel size and the DPI size. If you use it for screen, the DPI size doesn't really have any influence. This is only for print. And, um, but if you want it for print, you can change the units here. You can see, for example, with 72 TPI, this is the largest size you could print it. Normally, of course, you would print with 300 DPI unless it's a really large print. And you have to renew this, um, like change it back and forth here. And then you see the size has changed. So this is now the largest size with 300 DPI that you can print in. And depending on the size you want to print in, you can see how much you could crop from the picture without losing the best resolution or the highest resolution that you can get. It's not, it's never a problem to have a picture that has too high resolution. It's always a problem to have a picture that has too low resolution. Okay, so let's go to the next point and that is to sharpen a picture. A lot of people make some mistakes here. Uh, for example, people often go in here, use the sharpen tool. Oops, I have to select my layer. There we go. Filters, sharpen, unsharp mask. And then they look at the complete picture and make their settings until they are happy with what they see and um, do it like this. The problem with that is you're not seeing what you're doing to the picture. So what you need to do is go to your zoom and zoom to 100%, which of course, just shows you a detail of the picture, but the benefit now is that you can actually see what is happening to the picture information. So now if we go again in here to sharpen, unsharp mask, you can see here, for example, when I do too much sharpening, I get these kind of fragments, especially over here. I hope you can see that on YouTube. You get these fragments in here when the factor is too high, when the radius is too high. So this is not good. Also, you get these outlines around the object and these depend often on the radius that you set here. So you can see smaller radius makes thinner lines and bigger radius makes like really huge lines and you might in some cases not see them with your eye when you zoom to the complete picture. So really go to 100%. And I would in most cases suggest to not go over a radius of two pixels, um, stay under it, rather play with the factor over here and keep still in mind that you might enhance the noise in the picture and you get some kind of these fragments in the picture. So really look out for that. And uh, you can also play with the threshold in the picture to see that you get a nice result, but try to zoom in 100%. You can move around to see what the result is. And I have to say this picture is really badly saved, has a lot of fragmentation that you can see right now with the sharpening tool when you're zoomed in. So this is a pretty extreme example. Normally you wouldn't get that much fragmentation. Okay, let's go to the next thing to avoid or the next thing to do. And that is don't use 
uh, clarity or contrast as a sharpening tool. I, I see a lot of people do that. Also, my mother is doing that. Um, so this is not a good idea. Use sharpen tool to sharpen and not any other tool. So if we go here, for example, into our develop persona, uh, there we have clarity and contrast and you could push up um, clarity. You see details are coming out and then you push up contrast a little bit and more details are coming out. But now, of course, the contrast is too high and the colors look strange. So we could go down here to shadows and highlight and try to fix that. And um, the picture starts to look really strange. And again, you can get really strange fragments like over here and strange outlines in the picture. So don't use clarity and contrast to sharpen your pictures. These are just used to get a little bit more detail in your picture and improve it a little bit and mostly stay under 20% when you use them unless the use really calls for that. But don't go extreme like 100% for most of these. Okay, so let's go to the next advice and that is color and i know it's very tempting when you see all these candy color pictures online on the different pages and every tri everybody tries to go more and more and more color but it is not really a good idea a lot of people they go and say okay why brands and let's push that up and wow and now we have some extreme colors let's duplicate this People actually do this. People actually edit pictures like this with really extreme candy colors because, of course, they are eye-catching and the picture might be very small as a thumbnail. So they want people to look at it and the views and the likes and stuff like that. But what you're actually doing is destroying your picture. Go for natural colors. Go for the actual feeling of what you want to show and not this kind of extreme colorization. And when you go back, I know the picture... Now it looks like it's kind of black and white or pastel colors doesn't have enough color. So if you're used to look at these super powered colors, it looks strange to actually look at natural colors, but try to go natural and try to think about what is it that I'm actually photographing? What is it I actually want to show? And here we have some very soft and delicate uh, leaves from this nice um, blossom. So Putting all the color on it is not actually the best idea. And this is uh, the next point I actually, uh, the next mistake I actually want to talk about, HDR. And this, you can see here, super extreme HDR. This was very popular some years ago um, to make it that extreme. You can see the scene is basically dead and it's completely flat. It looks like a 2D sketch, there is nothing left. Use HDR very soft and very in a very natural way. Of course, you want to try to simulate what you see with your eye and have a more like half a result that you couldn't take with your camera, but still try to be in a natural way. If you do it like this, super extreme, super over um, processed, it just kills the, the image and the atmosphere. So it's kind of, I don't know, unless you really like that art style, I would really suggest to rather go soft on the HDR settings um, and really get a natural result for that. Okay, the next thing we want to talk about is um, here, for example, in this picture, we have a nice background that is really complementing the stuff that we're seeing in front. And it's not blown out, so it's really working well also with the brightness and the shadows that we can see in the picture. Now here we have another example, and I know often it's problematic to try to find a nice angle and um, like here with the insect might fly away, so you're under some time pressure and stuff like that. But like you can see here, again, when the background is blown out and there is just white in these areas, there's nothing you can really do with it. There is no picture information, so editing even won't help you. Um, try to find another solution. Try to find another perspective. Even when you see something, go with your camera inner perspective. Like here, it's from, from bottom up. So, of course, you have in the background bright sky and you can't really use the picture. It will never look good. So, actually, try to rather go from 
um, the top down or try to go sideways something where you have something in the background that has a similar kind of brightness and contrast in it so it really mixes well like here which is a nice combination of foreground and background because you can't really do much in editing with this uh, you can replace the background and the sky and uh, it probably would look kind of fake so that's not really the best idea to do um, another thing that's important and you can see it with this picture like I said this wasn't saved very well it has a lot of fragmentation in here stuff like that so if you edit your pictures always save the picture with all the layers and then export it also uh, so I have a JPEG or a PNG to use online but don't just save the JPEG and then don't and not saving your layers because you might need to go back adjust something like that and of course never save over your original pictures because this means they are lost you could never go back to your original picture so that's an important um, thing also um, what else do we have for tips I don't think we have too much left um, another thing that I see a lot of people doing uh, that's another uh, I would I would say it's a beginner mistake is they photograph everything in raw you don't need to photograph everything in raw if you're on your holiday and you make I don't know 2,000 photos of something it just fills up your card and gives you a lot of work afterwards and you normally the you would have a, like a hobbyist camera or a semi-professional camera the point is these cameras are built to be used with the software you have inside of the camera helping you making the right choices the right adjustments these cameras are or the programs in the cameras are built on the experience the life experience of professional photographers and hundreds of thousands of examples that have been scanned and analyzed to give you good um, results so turning all of that off and just going raw doesn't really make sense the reason why you would use raw actually is that if you have a photo shooting a professional photo shooting with camera and light and everything in there uh, all these kind of preparations you want to have a raw image from the camera because for advertisement for example you do a lot and a lot of processing afterwards in your software and this is why you need the raw picture and of course you need the raw picture also because it's a very expensive shooting so you want to have the best and un most untouched information you can get so you have the most freedom afterwards but uh, just for your holiday or for your everyday use it doesn't really make that much sense it's you you are in in most cases you have a better um, day or a better process with it by trusting your camera actually understanding what the programs are that are in the camera and using them for your benefit and then adjusting it a little bit uh, because you don't want to adjust 2,000 pictures uh, each picture for hours like you would do with a raw picture from a photo shooting um, you want to adjust it a little bit and then be done with it and go to the next picture and this is how these cameras are built and what they are meant for um, okay so the last tip I think we we went through all the mistakes already the last one is resolution which is important and this is a little bit different than cropping because um, with cropping we talk about um, cutting the picture to a different size but with resolution we talk about exporting the picture so when you go here to export you can set a picture resolution here and depending on where you want to post the picture and what you want to do with the picture so this is actually about resolution and compression think about what is the size of the tool or the page that you're showing the picture to so if this is of course for a 4k screen you need to have a high resolution but if this is just for Facebook where most people look at it on their cell phone you can use a much lower resolution actually if you use a higher resolution Facebook will sample it down for you and they might not do as great a job as you would do with the picture the same goes for um, the quality here the quality setting 
I would mostly leave it at 85 and not change too much. If you can afford to use the full, um, uncom well, it's, it's still compressed, but go to 100%, uh, then that is also good. Don't go too low. Don't go like the 35 or something like that. That really doesn't make any sense today because we have too much, we have enough bandwidth on the internet. Unless, of course, um, if you want to send, my mother does that sometimes actually, sending an email with like 50 or 60 pictures, then you want to go uh, with a small size and probably a medium quality uh, which would be for well, okay 45 is pretty low uh, let's say 60 60 is still good okay so this is about uh, where to use it and how big the picture should be uh, with the resolution and the compression okay I think we went through all of the 10 I think we had uh, cropping sharpening contrast for sharpen colors the background saving the layers raw files HDR the resolution and um, photographing the pictures a little bit darker than it should be. So this was all for today. I hope you liked it. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my videos, I do two videos, two tutorials per week. And if you want to support me even more, head over to Patreon where you can get my original files with all the layers. You can post your pictures for feedback and even suggest topics that you want to see in future episodes. Thank you very much and see you in the next episode. Bye.